<laughs> Let's start our second presentation. So Karen Ambarsimian from Yerevan will talk about prompt-based methods in NLP. Yeah, let's start. So my name is Karen Kalarsman, I'm from Yerevan Men. And uh, the last four years I spent my time at Yerevan Men working on natural language processing, especially on those tasks uh, where a very limited amount of training data was available. available. And the problem of deep learning based methods is that they require a huge amount of training data. And it is not like how humans are doing solving these tasks. Okay, and I'm super excited about uh, these prompt-based methods because they are kind of similar to how we uh, solve these problems. And uh, especially for these tasks when uh, low in low resource tasks. And there are actually uh, multiple tasks that we can talk about and uh, one task of this kind uh, is common sense reasoning, where humans even don't need any training on this data, right? For example, you can uh, say what is, the, the, for example, this task, the winner versus schema challenge, the task is uh, to find uh, which word is referred by the pronoun it. And it is obvious for people uh, that it is referred to the trophy. Yeah. And uh, this is a very difficult. This was actually a very difficult task before 2018, I guess. Uh, and you can see that it also changed its answer when only one word is changed. And this was, uh, as, as I said, very difficult task for especially deep learning based models. And uh, we had only limited data avail available for this task. And the first paper that showed the success on this task uh, was uh, used as some tricks uh, using language modeling. I want to remind you what is language modeling. Language model is when uh, you have a you, you can estimate or generate a text, uh, say language model is the distribution of the text in that language. Uh, so basically P is the function which returns you a probability of the text uh, appearing in the corpus of uh, that specific language. Uh, and the good thing about the language models is that uh, these language models can be easily trained because uh, almost unlimited amount of data is available on the internet. You can crawl all the data, all the text in the internet and train on them. And in this paper, it was the first time uh, when they successfully uh, had uh, any success with this task. Uh, in this paper, they suggested a trick uh, to replace the word it, the, to this pronoun, uh, with two options with the trophy and the suitcase. So we have two sentences for these two options. And the only thing we have to do is to uh, pass it to a language model, which will predict which sentence is more likely. We can just compare the probabilities. And if the first sentence is more likely, it means that uh, the pronoun it referring to the first option is more likely. And vice versa for this other uh, example. And you can see there at this for for, for this specific setup, uh, absolutely no training data is required. Uh, it is called zero shot. This kind of setup. And this uh, helped gain more than nine percent uh, accuracy for this task. And uh, in a, another work, uh, work uh, in GPT-2, GPT-2 was a big language model, and they tried uh, this trick uh, to write, translate English to French, and after that write a, a sample English word. And it turns out that the language model starts to predict next word 
uh, the French translation of this work. Uh, one quick reminder too, the language models are not only to estimate the probability of the given text, but also they can actually uh, generate continuation of this text. Uh, so basically, it, this is not very surprising, uh, because these language models are trained on all the text data available on the internet, and there, so these are four examples text pieces uh, found in the internet, they somehow contain in the same sentence the English and uh, French translation of the, of the same sentence. So basically, if language model is, is trained on this kind of text corpora, it has to imitate and be able to continue and translate uh, sentences, right? Uh, so this was very surprising at that time. And uh, we can also do tricks using this. For example, there was a paper which um, suggested as a way, uh, way to crawl and find uh, new data, training data for summarization task. So idea is uh, this. Uh, in Reddit, if there is a long post, uh, they append, people append their own post with this word TLDR, and they add uh, sum summarize the short version of the same text. So basically, they uh, suggested us to uh, generate, uh, like, crawl all the data and use it as a training data for deep learning based models. But we, using language models, what we can do is to, uh, you, without using this ready specific crawler, as we have language model which was trained on all of the internet, we can type a sentence and type TLDR and ask language model to generate a continuation for, for us. Okay, so basically it generates a summarized, a summarized text uh, for any uh, given text. And it also has ability to uh, do a question answering. So basically a uh, question is made and after that we obtain answer and ask language model to uh, continue the text. So it, you can also see that uh, most of times it answers correctly. Okay, so these, all, all, these, uh, all these tricks uh, show us how to use uh, this uh, on zero-shot setup. So basically no training data is available. But can we also have uh, use training example to, to, to uh, make uh, our models better. It turns out that we can, and in another work, GPT in GPT-3, uh, GPT-3 is a huge language model. It, it has like uh, 170 billion parameters. It's very huge, and in that paper, they tried this kind of trick. They added not only the task description, but also they uh, include a uh, few input-output demonstration in the same text. For example, not only uh, they they provide English and French English and French pairs, and after that uh, they ask language model to generate. And this turns out to uh, work good. So it definitely uh, improves the performance of the model. This kind of uh, uh, tricks do not require any gradient updates, and uh, no other training is required, just pre-trained language model. Uh, they can even uh, extract uh, like information from the table uh, as asked with uh, like natural language. And it can even generate a Python code for you. Just ask it. Right. The, the bold part is, the bold parts are what the language model was generated. And uh, also there is a graph, uh, the x-axis is the number of examples provided in the context, and y-axis is, is the performance. He, we can see here uh, that yeah, I, these two uh, lines are uh, with and without uh, natural language description. So you can easily see that natural language description is crucial uh, for very low number of examples. Okay, so uh, 
about this, uh, why, why do we need uh, natural language task descriptions? In uh, this paper, uh, uh, in pattern exploit training, this paper starts with this specific exa example. Uh, given these two sentences, one of them has labeled zero and one of them has labeled one. Can you predict the label of the third sentence? Can everyone say what it should be? Zero. Zero? One. Okay, so many people need many answers. It, it, it is, it is uh, not surprising. Why? Because someone may think that this is about uh, cuisine, right? This is a classification of review into uh, cuisines, whether it is like Italian cuisine uh, or Asian cuisine, right? Uh, or in another uh, perspective, uh, we can think of, about uh, review sentiment classification. So basically, uh, this is a positive uh, sentence, this is a negative sentence, so basically, that the third one has to be uh, has uh, one label. So basically, two labels are the both, the both labels are correct. So what we can do here, if I asked a question like this and ask you to predict this, you'll definitely pick zero because there is a word here which suggests you uh, what I mean uh, with this task. And if I uh, replace it with rated, yeah, you can see the difference. Okay, so basically, in this paper, this paper continues uh, with the thing that uh, we can use this pattern-based uh, methods uh, in order to predict uh, in zero-shot setup, right? So basically, you have model after uh, if you have a pre-trained language model. And if you have a model already, you can do pseudo-labeling. So basically, if you have a huge number of unannotated examples, you can run this model to generate pseudo-labels for and use that pseudo-labels pseudo in order to train a new language, a new model. And after that, you can use the new model to pseudo-label new one. And with this uh, trick, they can actually uh, improve the performance of these our zero shot models. And it turns out that they even outperform GPT-3, which was like two orders of magnitudes uh, larger uh, than I think this paper. Okay? Uh, it is yeah, they outperform almost on all the tasks. Uh, and so they show that uh, these kind of huge language models are not uh, required to do future learning. I want to remind you that these tasks are solved by both GPT-3 and PET using just 32 training examples. Not 32 million or thousand. 32 examples. And actually, I, we have no row here for BERT, but BERT using all the training data available, like uh, tens of thousands uh, training examples. With PET and GPT-3, you can outperform BERT just using by 32 examples. So basically, this is like uh, this was a, like uh, this was I what I meant uh, by sunset summer sunset method. So another another work uh, on this. Uh, topic uh, is uh, T5. In T5, uh, they used machine translation models in order to translate an input text into the desired target text. And we can do this on machine translation tasks. In text classification tasks, you can pick input as your input. And uh, to have uh, the natural language, just words or phrases for each class, uh, for each class in your classification task. And what you do for text regr for regression tasks, uh, it turns out they tried to ask the language model to predict decimal number, the text representation of it, and it worked okay. Yeah. Even better than number. And uh, here too, the good thing is that this kind of model can be trained in a completely unsupervised way 
and basically what they do is they tr they make uh, artificial training uh, data by just removing some words and asking this language model to generate to recover the removed word, words. So this input level reprogramming of models is just an NLP thing, or is it? So it turns out no. Uh, there's a uh, there was a paper uh, which suggested us that we can find such a padding that add it to any any MNIST handwritten digit will make ImageNet models to perform on this task. So basically, a model which has never seen any digit of this kind, it is reprogrammed uh, to to solve just a handwritten digit classification. And the difference here is that uh, this padding is in continuous space, yeah, and this padding is found automatically. It has no sense actually. It is not something that you can interpret or explain. And we thought about like uh, joining this with uh, the prompt-based approaches, and what we did is we thought about not only having a prompt, text-based prompt, but using continuous words or prompts uh, to to solve this our task. And this kind of continuous prompts are can be found found using stochastic gradient descent using just a standard regular objective uh, which we train. And you can see that work outperforms uh, GPT-3.2. And here's the t here we have we have a trick. In contrast to this work, when this uh, is not interpreted, actually for our two our models our parameters are continuous and are not interpretable. But the good thing is that we can actually initialize these embeddings with. Uh, word embeddings of a manually designed prompt. And we know that manually designed prompts work okay on zero-shot setup. So basically, if we initialize this, and we continue training this, like in other salary programming paper, we can improve the performance, and what this is what we did, and we outperformed GPT-3 uh, just using 32 examples. Uh, here's a graph which makes all obvious uh, Okay, another work uh, was uh, uses the same trick only on generative tasks. They do, uh, and they show that even in uh, standard, uh, e even they can outperform standard fine tuning performance. Uh, another thing uh, in LMBFF, uh, this is another paper uh, which actually shows a way to how to find automatically how to find prompts, but not continuous ones, just discrete ones. So. Uh, what they seek for is just text prompts. And what they do is they use a T5, that same model which can actually re recover the remove segments, and they want to find the best uh, the, the best prompt for all of them. So basically this is what, we, what they did. And the, my favorite part is that what they, what they get is something interpretable. And I guess this is the first time I've ever seen interpretable models uh, in deep learning. Uh, I, what I mean models, but uh, in prompt-based learning, model is the prompt. So this is our prompt, so our model is interpretable. And this is just crazy. Uh, okay, this is just a Sorry, I, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but uh, there are some issues with language models. Known issues that they are sometimes racist, they are sexist, and they can be uh, autocomplete and generate like very offensive text. And uh, this is something uh, people wanted to uh, address. And what they did is they used the very same language model to do that. And what they could do is just um, use the same model to, s to use this template in order to make, uh, make the model prediction less sexist or less racist. For, for example, what they can do is that 
Uh, this is a sample generated text, right? I hate Blake so much, it generates people. But if you prepare something like the following does not contain racism, I hate Blake something so much. And it generates hats. Because it, it, is, it will be less likely than in the same set, in the same text, these two sentences appear if the must word is people. Okay? So to conclude, this is a way that prompt-based learning is a similar way how, that how people are trained. It, there are many tasks that we don't need any training examples for, or uh, tasks that we need just three demonstrations in order to be able to solve that particular task. And, uh, uh, and this is also a place where we can see that uh, not only training examples can be used, but also human attribution can be used to, to, to make uh, models uh, better. So uh, this is all. I, I think we can have questions. One small thing before. Uh, can you go back to the slide with the biasing? Okay. Uh, is it? Oh, it's GPT-2? This is GPT-2 and T5. Yeah. Okay. okay. The DNA question. Access. So, yeah, another question. Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. And uh, my question is about uh, quality, uh, if we compare supervised learning and this prompt-based learning. As I understand, you can correct me, co correct me because I'm not uh, closely looking for, for these prompt-based um, uh, results. Uh, still, if we use prompt-based uh, learning, then we will not reach uh, the level of uh, the model if we have uh, supervised learning. Uh, but as we increase, like we make prompt bigger and bigger, we, we are getting closer and closer to the supervised results. So, like in limit, we can put all our training data set in the prompt, and then the question is, will we get the same results after training or not? And uh, it, it's the first question. Do, do you know some studies where we are trying to see what is the difference between this uh, prompt-based uh, learning and uh, gradient-based learning. And uh, the second question, then, then we will compare like effectiveness, uh, what are trade-offs? We spend time in training, or we spend uh, resources during inference, uh, because we are feeding in uh, longer uh, sequences to our model. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Uh, on the first, first question, uh, Actually, yeah, there, there is a trade-off. Uh, so basically, when you use a discrete text-based prompt, uh, it has to be larger and larger in order to encode more information on how to solve the task. So basically, if you have a task which is kind of easy, kind of easy to explain how to how to solve that task, yeah, you can uh, you can solve it using just a basic uh, prompt. But if there is a task which requires more information or has more specific cases, like when to uh, answer what, uh, in those cases, yeah, we may need very, very big uh, prompts. And this is also what we tried to address, because if, we, if you use a continuous prompt, you have more place to adjust the prompt. You have more uh, degree of freedom in your parameters. Okay, so uh, this is also what we shown. So our model actually outperforms all the all the other words they that use uh, non-continuous prompts. And in our uh, paper and also in the paper of in our parallel paper. On both tasks, we show that we can even outperform traditional fine-tuning. Okay. Uh, on uh, second uh, question, what was the second question? Sorry. 
uh, it's a trade-off if we increase prompt or we train or yeah. we fine-tune more. Uh, do we have some balance or what is your idea? I don't know the answer. Maybe you also don't have an answer. It's just yeah, I, I, I have no answer to in that case. I just uh, can say that uh, in these last uh, works, when they uh, like us, they do uh, continuous based things, continuous based prompts. It is not that required to have that long uh, prompt texts. So, for for our case, if we use always we use eight or sixteen uh, prompt tokens, it is like hardly making any difference in the cost of uh, the uh, inference part. Uh, and I want to also remind you that. This, uh, at least for now, we know that these kind of approaches are very good. Are, are we, I can recommend people to use if they have very limited, if they have very limited amount of data available. And uh, also, uh, one more thing I want to mention is that, for example, Shikatsu uh, Shutsu, they use knowledge distillation in order to uh, they, they 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 do a pseudo labeling. They generate it generate uh, training data, and after that, they, they just use a plain uh, BERT-based uh, model to train on, and in the end, they have a model which is even better than the one, uh, the prompt-based one, and after that, they can use this model to solve these tasks. Okay, so basically, you can use prompt-based techniques in order to gain data and to use the same data to build a uh, more um, cheaper, uh, cheaper, cheaper performing model. Uh, my two cents on that question. My impression is that there is a saturation. So if you go from a prompt with 500 words to 1000 words, probably you won't see a difference. So I don't think these models can read that much and, and uh, gain significant information from that. Uh, so, uh, probably it won't reach uh, very large training sets. Yeah, uh, what they actually do, the, as you know, the context is very limited, a thousand words maximum. Uh, in those cases, you can't actually pass all your training data available to, to your context. But what you can do is that you can, you can pass the same, your input sentence, with different uh, uh, sets, subsets of training data, and you can assemble them. And this is also a trick used by uh, this paper, uh, and it shows it, it is shown to be effective. And sometimes even it is better to uh, use uh, three uh, training example demonstrations and do assemble these ten times than use thirty examples. And also, in an assemble case, you can use different manually designed prompts in order to, uh, as, 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 our, as our task de description. Okay. Uh, let's have one more question. And okay. uh, Thanks for the interesting topic. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, what is the, uh, do you have some results about the question answering task uh, with prompt-based learning? Does it improve, uh, like, uh, versus fine tuning? Do you have some uh, uh, results of study? Okay, uh, right now I don't have with me uh, such a table, but what I can say is that uh, this, our, uh, this paper uh, was about on uh, tech generation tasks, and they pretty they were pretty good at. Uh, question answering and also one more thing there is also um, another task closed book question answering which is basically when question is uh, provided but no passages uh, given right in those especially on closed book question answering tasks these like uh, all perform others with a significant margin Okay, let's thank the speaker again.